What's going on everyone? It's KB the Mark back to bring you the news. On today's wrestling report, we have many stories to discuss, starting with Natalia addresses potentially joining WWE writing team. A Steel confirms he's working for TNA Wrestling. AEW star may not need surgery and many more stories. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay up to date. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the news. TNA Wrestling has brought in A Steel full time to work for them. Steel have been working for AEW, but things went sideways in August 2022 due to the AEW All Out Brawl involving CM Punk who pushed for AEW to rehire him after they released him for his part in the All Out Brawl. Once Punk was let go by AEW last year, many thought it was just a matter of time before Steel would be next, and that was the case after he had been working remotely. TNA brought in Steel for its biggest event of the year, Bound for Glory 2023, as a tryout to be a producer. There was some talk of using Steel as a surprise in the gauntlet for the gold, but that was nixed due to concern that fans may expect CM Punk, who was a free agent at the time, to show up. While speaking to John Paz on Two Man Power Trip, Steele confirmed that he is working as a producer for the promotion. He added that he loves working for the company and the backstage atmosphere. Steele didn't mention exactly when he started working for the promotion. TNA presents his No Surrender special on Friday night before holding TV tapings. WWE's live event business has been on fire for the last few years in addition to the popularity of the promotion being up, as shown in attendance for shows and television ratings being up for all of its three shows. WWE's house show on Sunday night in Fresno, California, headlined by Cody Rhodes vs Shinsuke Nakamura in a street fight, did big business for the company. While speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted the WWE house show drew its biggest crowd for any house show aside from live events at Madison Square Garden, which is always loaded up and treated as a special event due to WWE's history at the venue in years. They did almost 10,000 people, and that was the biggest house show crowd for any WWE show aside from Madison Square Garden, which I'm not going to say doesn't count, but it's completely different. But it was the biggest house show crowd that they've done in the United States since August of 2021, which was right after the pandemic. They did like 10,000 people for a show in Detroit, and it's like Fresno is not exactly Detroit, and it's certainly not Madison Square Garden. Fresno has always been a good wrestling city overall, but not like a great wrestling city, but always a good one per capita. It usually does better than most cities of its size, but 10,000 people for a house show, and it was just a normal house show, it was nothing. Meltzer added, they did 7,500 in Oakland on better than 7,500 in Oakland on Saturday night as well, which I would have gone if it wasn't for the UFC. That's a great crowd for Oakland. It's a great crowd for our show. So WWE is on fire. They're on fire. They are so popular. They sold out tonight in Anaheim for Raw, Meltzer stated. Injuries are going to happen in wrestling, but sometimes they happen at the worst time. El Hijo Del Vikingo is a man in demand as he wrestles for AEW, Ring of Honor, and AAA in addition to his indie bookings over the last few years. Vikingo started working for AEW last March where he put over Kenny Omega on Dynamite before beating Drillistico on the April 2023 Rampage. He has worked several matches since then, mostly on Rampage, with his most recent bout happening on the January 24th Rampage where he worked a fatal four-way match for a shot at the international title, which Commander won. Over the weekend, Vikingo teamed with Psycho Clown and Wotan, losing to Negocio, Tramado, Dimano Inferno, Fresero Jr., and Trauma Eye at Aul Rencor Extremo. This is where he suffered a torn meniscus. Dave Meltzer noted in the Wrestling Observer Daily Update that it looks like El Hijo Del Vikingo may not need surgery for a torn meniscus. If he doesn't get the surgery, then he'll be sidelined while doing rehab. Obviously, if he undergoes the knife, then he could be sidelined for much longer, most cases from six weeks to three months. Natalia has been one of the mainstays of WWE's women's division ever since her debut back in 2008. 
She won't always be an in-ring competitor as retirement is inevitable someday, after which it appears she isn't against joining the WWE writing team. While the Queen of Hearts is always training to keep herself sharp, things have certainly changed for Natalya lately in terms of her WWE storylines. There is no doubt that she remains an invaluable asset to the company no matter what. Natalya continues to assist the younger generation while competing on WWE television. As her in-ring career approaches its end, she remains open to options post-retirement. In a recent interview on Busted Open Radio, Natalya discussed the possibility of joining the WWE creative team. She acknowledged the challenging nature of the writer's job and expressed interest in contributing to the creative process. While not ruling out future involvement with WWE, she emphasized her excitement about personal growth in 2024. I will tell you, our writing team has an extremely challenging job. My husband TJ always says this, he always says, nobody understands how challenging it is to book the show. TJ is a producer and works closely with the writers and behind the scenes. He always says, you never know when someone is injured or gets COVID or somebody is working through a situation. I think the writers have such a challenging job because there are so many people that you're trying to please. I'll be honest, at times there's a lot of massaging of egos because everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to win, protect their equity, be on top. Everybody wants to main event WrestleMania and be the one. Sometimes you need to be a bride and sometimes you need a bridesmaid. The writers have an extremely challenging job. Never say never. For me, I have a lot of really fun things coming up that do involve writing, creating, and me celebrating my career and everything I've accomplished. Never say never as far as doing more in WWE, but I'm so excited about growing. 2024 is a year about growth. Natalia's most recent in-ring appearance was on the February 19th episode of Monday Night Raw. During the last chance battle royal for a spot in the women's elimination chamber this weekend, she eliminated her tag team partner, Tegan Knox. Only time will tell whether Natalia will eventually become a writer once she retires from in-ring competition for good. Do you feel Natalia would be a great fit as part of the WWE writing team once she retires as an in-ring WWE superstar? Let us know in the comments below. Despite Jay Cargill's impactful debut at the Royal Rumble, WWE has yet to capitalize on her potential. It was then made apparent that the initially planned plans for her at Elimination Chamber have been abandoned. The reason for WWE scrapping plans for Cargill has now been revealed. As seen on this week's episode of Monday Night Raw, Raquel Rodriguez made her triumphant return and won the last chance battle royal for a spot in the women's elimination chamber match. WWE had plans for Jay Cargill at Elimination Chamber, but those were scrapped. While speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer talked about Jay Cargill's plans in the company lately. Dave Meltzer noted that Raquel Rodriguez ended up taking Jay Cargill's spot in the last chance battle royal adding that it was simply because Cargill competing in the Women's Elimination Chamber bout did not make sense. What do you think WWE should plan for Jay Cargill at WrestleMania 40? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Eric Young is known to be one of the most talented and captivating wrestling stars in the business. Despite being offered a spot in the big league like AEW, Young recently revealed his reason for not joining the Jacksonville-based promotion. Eric Young gained credibility for his long stint in TNA wrestling and later on in WWE as part of the faction, Sanity, and even as a singles performer. However, he was later released by the company in 2020. During a recent KNS WrestleFest virtual signing, the former two time TNA world champion was asked about him considering AEW as a viable option following the WWE release. However, Eric Young boldly stated that he was not interested in joining the company. No, I don't think so. No, I'm not interested. We definitely had a bit of a discussion last time when I was a free agent there a couple months ago. Just not for me. I'm glad that it exists. I've got tons of really good friends that are there and there's tons of diehard fans that love it. The more wrestling, the better. The more jobs, the better and I wish them all the luck. Furthermore, he even mentioned that he would finish his career in TNA and that he was just not AEW president Tony Khan's perception of a superstar. 
It's just not for me. I will wrestle and finish my career at TNA Wrestling, and then I'll disappear and then move into the woods. I don't think Tony Khan thinks of me that way to back up the Brinks truck, so he's not going to do that. He's always been polite to me. I don't have anything bad to say about him, but I don't think I'm his cup of tea. I'm not an internet guy. I've never been an internet guy. I'm just not one of those guys. I don't post my matches. I don't care about how many stars the internet gave me. So I'm not concerned with that world. Now that he mentioned that he would like to wind up his career in TNA, it will be interesting to see when the time is upon Eric Young's highly accomplished career. Do you think Eric Young made the right call picking his former promotion TNA over AEW following his release in 2020? Let us know in the comments. This year, the excitement is brewing in Cleveland, Ohio, as rumors swirl about the potential hosting of WWE's annual extravaganza, SummerSlam, at the Cleveland Browns Stadium. The Columbus Dispatch suggests that WWE is set to receive a substantial 1.676 million tax credit from the state of Ohio as part of the state's generous 44 million credit allocated for television and film production in 2024. While no official announcement has been made regarding a major WWE event in Ohio, speculations are rife that this tax credit could be linked to the buzz surrounding Cleveland's bid to host SummerSlam. Fightful Select first reported in October last year that the Forest City was emerging as the top contender to host the grand event dubbed the biggest party of the summer. Cleveland holds a special place in WWE's history of hosting premium live events. The city witnessed its first major WWE spectacle with SummerSlam 1996, featuring the iconic showdown between then WWF champion Shawn Michaels and Big Van Vader. Over the years, Cleveland has been the backdrop for memorable WWE events such as No Mercy 1999, Survivor Series 2004, Unforgiven 2008, and WWE TLC 2014. With the anticipation building and the possibility of SummerSlam gracing Cleveland Brown Stadium, WWE fans and citizens alike are eagerly awaiting confirmation of what could be a monumental event in the city's history. Where do you think SummerSlam should be hosted this year? Let us know in the comments below. That's it guys, thank you for tuning in. Please feel free to express your opinion below. Be sure to check out more videos from the channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Once again, I'm KB The Mark, signing off. Until the next one. I started with nothing and came out of king. Came out of king. Yeah. I've been the one that's been balling for rings. I've been the one that's been balling for rings. It's been me and my team and we chasing the green. My team be the shit, we ain't balling for free. My team be the shit, we ain't balling for free.